In this video, we review the Blickman Cornicle, and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see product reviews just like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Full disclosure on this, they did send me the entire kit that includes the cone-shaped bottom, the keg assembly. So I got everything that I need to use it as a keg and as a conical fermenter. Along with that, they sent me the new, soon to be announced, spunding valve. The spunding valve is not yet listed on their website, which it should be listed there very soon. So if you're watching in the future, I'll actually link down in the description for that spunding valve on their website. Now the Cornicle is not a new product for Blickman. It's been out for a number of years. And when they contacted me about doing a review on it, I was a little bit perplexed on, you know, what I would do with it, to be honest with you, because as you know, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, I am very much aware of how oxygenation and the exposure to oxygen can affect beers and all that. And with this device, the way you flip it over and switch the two components around from, from conical fermenter to a keg, there's a lot of air that I believe would get, you know, in the mix there and possibly cause some oxidation with the beer. So, you know, I, I voiced my concerns about that up front with them whenever I was talking to them and uh, had, a, had a conversation with John Blickman actually about it. And he had done some testing on it. And, you know, he, he's saying that it doesn't uptake any oxygen because there's a layer of CO2 in there. Now, the only way that I wanted to review this product was if I could do a scientific measurement because all I've done in the past has been a sensory test. And so that, you know, that's not always accurate because of the fact that you're just relying on your senses to give you the information. So I was able to get my hands on a DO or dissolved oxygen meter. And so I told him, I said, you know what, I'll do the review on it. I'll do the, the fermentation. I'll do the flip and whatever the results are or what the results are. And stay tuned for the latter part of the video and I will share the dissolved oxygen results after doing the flip with you. But first I wanted to kind of go through some of the features of the Cornicle, just in case you weren't familiar with it. So first I want to discuss it as a fermenter. As a fermenter, it is a seven and a half gallon fermenter. And the bottom part of the Cornicle actually is a cone shaped stainless steel, all one piece. And it has an inch and a half tri-clamp uh, fitting at the bottom. And then it also has a half inch hole in the side of the cone, and that is for a rotating racking cane. And that is a weldless design where it has a washer on the outside, and then there is a compression fitting on the inside for the racking cane itself. And then on the outside, it has a very nice variable valve that you can take samples for while you're fermenting, or even if you want to do transferring from the conical fermenter. Now at the bottom of the cone, it comes with a set of three tri-clamps, and those tri-clamps hold on a 90 degree elbow, a butterfly valve, and then there's also a one inch discharge port or a cap to go on the bottom of the fermenter. For the fermentation at the top of the vessel, you have multiple options. Uh, the first one of those is there is one of the Blickman quick connect fittings that you can put a washer into, screw it into the top of the fermentation cap that goes on and put a simple airlock in there. The next option that you have is taking a 90 degree elbow along with that same Blickman quick fitting and attaching a blow off tube and running it down beside the fermenter into a bucket of star sand. Now the option that I used during my testing was the spunding valve that's soon to be released and I'll leave a link in the description for that once it comes out. And that is where I think this thing really shines as a fermenter. Uh, the spunding valve is super adjustable. I mean, I was able to dial in one pound increments without any problem at all. It worked really great for that. Um, the other thing that this thing is capable of is, is handling up to 50 PSI. And that is actually one of the highest rated fermentation vessels on the market. I mean, it's right up there with a the unitank. Probably some unitanks don't even go to 50 PSI. So that is a plus for it in that regard. Now, after fermentation, the way you would handle it is there is a mark on the side of the body of the keg housing. To determine how much liquid is in the fermenter, you would depressurize if you're fermenting under pressure. If you're not, then it's not a step that you need to take. Open your sampling valve with the hose attached to see what the level is. There is a five gallon mark on the side of the keg. And then depending on how much is in there, you can either dump more out or just leave it as it is. And then once you do that, you'll need to take the fermentation cap off of the keg and replace that with a solid keg top that comes with the system. Once you do that, then you can flip it over, take the clamp off, remove the cone bottom, and then replace the cone bottom with the Cornelius keg bottom that has rubber feet just like a regular keg. Flip it back over, 
hook your CO2 up, purge any kind of air out of it that was in there, and then you are ready to use it as a keg. Now, with regards to using it as a keg and the whole flip and the oxidation and all of that, I did do a control for this test because I wanted to have another closed system that I could test the readings on with the dissolved oxygen meter as well as the cornicle. I do have another vessel that allows for pressurized fermentation. So when I started this test, I actually did a 10 gallon batch of just a plain lager and split the batch between two fermenters. About five gallons in the cornicle and about five gallons in the other fermentation vessel. Uh, I used the White Labs high pressure lager yeast and fermented both of them under 15 PSI pressure. Like I said, the spunding valve on the cornicle worked very well. I did have a little bit of issue getting the seal on the other fermentation vessel, which I did not have any issues at all with the cornicle. So I, I fermented as normal. And then once I was done, I did the flip on the, the cornicle. And then I actually did a oxygen free or low oxygen transfer with the other fermentation vessel. I filled a keg up with a star sand solution, pushed that out with CO2. Then I did a pressure transfer using the spunding valve on that other keg from the other fermentation vessel. So really there's not, in my mind, there shouldn't be any chance for any kind of oxygenation or any kind of oxygen exposure. So after I did that, I threw them both in my kegerator, let them sit overnight because I wanted to see if any of that oxygen that could have possibly been in the cornicle would, you know, saturate into the beer. And that was part of the conversation I had with John was that, you know, the, the bubble that you experience in the bottom or top of that keg whenever you do the flip is a large bubble. Large bubbles don't go into solution, especially with a, you know, 68 degree beer. They just don't go into solution as easily as finer bubbles do. And that was kind of one of the, the points that he had made to me whenever he was talking to me about reviewing this unit. So I did that, I put them in the kegerator, I let them sit overnight, and then I took samples of them, and then I used the dissolved oxygen meter. I have to be honest with you, the results from the dissolved oxygen test were kind of baffling to me. Now, I wanna preface this with saying that I've never used a dissolved oxygen meter before. I did follow all of the instructions in the manual for the calibration on it. I did this like two or three different times during trying to test the samples of beer. As you can see here, about the lowest reading that I got on the cornicle fermenter was roughly real close to 1.0 parts per million. As far as the other fermentation vessel that I did the closed transfer on, it was actually higher than what the other one was. So, I mean, in my mind, I was kind of just shocked by that because of the fact that it should have had, like, in my opinion, it should have had almost zero oxygen. So I don't know you know, if it's, if it's my ineptness at using the meter or what the case is. The other thing I thought about was there was still a, quite a bit of presence of yeast in the cornicle sample. And, you know, did it sitting overnight, did, they, did the yeast consume some of the oxygen in there? And that's what caused the lower number. But I mean, as you can see, the, the results show that the closed fermentation and closed transfer system actually had more dissolved oxygen than what the cornicle did. You know, I was really surprised by the tests and I, you know, honestly, that's, that's the test that came through. And as you can see from the samples, I mean, that's, you know, the, the, the two samples are different. The one is clearer than the other one. The one that came from the cornicle is clearly the cloudy one. So I don't know, you be the judge if it's, if it's me or if, you know, maybe there's some other factor that I'm not taking into account, you know, leave a comment down below if there's something that you think I'm doing wrong about that. So what are my thoughts on the conical? As of recording this video, they actually have dropped the price to $3.99. And at that price point, it becomes a very viable option for a fermenter. I will be honest with you, I don't think that I will use this as a fermenter and then flip it for a keg. And there's a couple reasons why, as you saw with the test for the dissolved oxygen, one of them had, was very cloudy. There was a lot of trub and a lot of yeast that was left over behind when I did the flip. I wasn't really excited about that, and that's one of the things that could be a downfall of it. It is a real strong contender in the conical fermenter market. There's not a lot of fermenters that do the same pressurized fermentation, have the dump valve and all that stuff at this price point. There are a couple things that I wish that it had. Number one, I wish it had a way to monitor temperature, which would allow you also to stick a probe in there and, and maybe do some kind of fermentation temperature control. The other thing that I do wish it had would be a cooling coil. And I think one of the reasons why there hasn't been more of these type of things developed for this product is that it just, I don't know if it's sold real well, quite honestly, because of the fact that people were scared of the oxygenation and all that. So. You know, I think that if they were to make some, uh, like a cooling coil for it, kind of like what they do with the anvil system, as well as, you know, some sort of a port on the side, which I think you could probably drill a hole in the cone and do a weldless thermal well in there and, and solve that issue pretty easily. Um, the other kind of downside to it is the fact that it's really tall. It's about 41 inches with the spunding valve installed. So, I mean, you're really gonna need like a 
stand-up fridge or something like that. I did put it up next to one of my freezers and it just it doesn't fit into like a chest freezer like some you know smaller fermenters do. Uh, you would need to put a collar on the on the you know the the chamber or have you know a front opening chamber in order to do it. So overall, it's a new price point. I think it makes a great conical fermenter with a backup keg in a pinch. Leave me a comment down below on what your thoughts are on it. How would you use it? You know, is it is it worthwhile? Is it is it a is it a product that you know was made without a market? As some people have said, let me know in the comments down below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate all the support. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Brian with Short Circuit Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.